Hi everyone, welcome to today's tutorial which is going to be all about how to make your own Battenberg cake. After attempting to make my own version of a Battenberg tin, I eventually gave in and bought one and I will say that they are totally worth it. Now the first step for this is to grease it using butter and then cover it with uh, flour. Now you need to really tap out the excess because otherwise it cakes onto the cake when it's cooked and it doesn't look very good. This is a very simple recipe, it's an all-in-one recipe so just bung all of the ingredients in one bowl and mix them together using either a free standing electric mixer or a hand whisk. What I will say is with all-in-one recipes it's very tempting to as soon as everything's together to just leave it and get it into the tin but I always find that all-in-one recipes need a little more whipping because they haven't had that air whipped into the mixture from the action of creaming the butter and the sugar and then carefully adding everything else. So just whip it for a couple of extra minutes before you go on to adding it into the tin. So as you can see here from those couple of minutes of extra whipping the mixture is a lot lighter in colour and I like to get it to about this stage before I move on. This is a classic example of do as I say and not as I do. Um, I saw in the recipe that you should weigh your mixture before adding it into the tin and I thought, saw this as a waste of time. In my defence, I have been taught since I was a child that as soon as any liquid touches any raising agent of any kind, you need to get it in the tin as quickly as possible because that raising agent will activate and it will start to create bubbles and you'll lose that effect if you take too long to get your cake in the oven. But in the case of Battenbergs, I think a little extra time should be taken to carefully weigh out the mixture and half it so that you get more of an equal distribution between the four sections. At this point, I'm adding my favorite Wilton gel coloring to the remaining mixture in my freestanding electric mixer and just very quickly incorporating this. Be sure that you don't have any white streaks because it will look really bad on the cross section when you cut up your Battenberg. So once you've got your batter into your cake tin, bake for 20 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. Now the difference between the sponges didn't look huge, but on baking, half of the mixture came out pretty big and the other half pretty small. So again, weigh out your batter before you put it in the cake tin. If your sponges do end up being a bit larger than you want expected, keep them in the tin and use a cake leveller or a serrated knife and use the edge of the cake tin as a guide and it will really help to get a super flat finish on your cake sponges. This will be really helpful when it comes to assembling the Battenberg. This is an important note to touch on. I see a lot of people when they're getting sponges out of cake tins, they use a kind of up and down motion with the palette knife. This is actually really bad practice. Um, it means that the edges of your cakes get a really frayed finish. So try and avoid doing that and just try and get the palette knife in and use one smooth clean motion and you'll find that the finish comes out a lot better.
So I hate shop-bought marzipan. I thought I hated all marzipan, but it turns out it's just shop-bought. When I made my own marzipan for the first time, I was amazed at how different it tasted compared to shop-bought. So for this, I have made my own marzipan. I'm gonna create a second video on how to do this. This video came out quite long and making your own marzipan can be quite a tricky process. Um, so what you'll notice is that with homemade marzipan, there are a lot more cracks that appear when you're rolling it out. If you're not very confident about doing this yourself, then feel free to use shop bought you'll find that it will be just a little bit easier to handle and it will be a little bit more forgiving If you do decide to use your own marzipan, the important thing to do is to cut any frayed edges off as soon as possible. This is also a really good tip for if you're doing any pastry. Any small cracks on the side can expand and become a lot larger and a lot more problematic later on. Be sure that you're using your Battenberg sponges to determine how wide you want to make your marzipan. You don't want to end up rolling it out too thin to accommodate for something that's actually a lot smaller than you uh, assumed. So now it's time for the fun part, the assembly. Now, most of the instructions I've found for Battenberg assembly have been pretty abysmal. So I'm gonna try and do my best to make this as simple a process as possible. First thing you need to do is measure in two sponges width away from the edge closest to you. This will become clearer later on, um, but what you want to do then is mark it out and then put down a layer of apricot jam. If you find your apricot jam a bit hard to use, I recommend recommend either watering it down with a tiny bit of boiling water or just beating it until it's smooth enough to handle. This may seem a stupid bit of advice but keep track of the colours that you're using because you want that checkerboard effect on your cross sections. You want to apply jam in between all the sponges so even in between the sponges that are sat next to each other because you'll make the cake taste a lot better later on. So once you've stacked all your sponges, you want to cover all of the exposed sides with apricot jam. This is gonna act as a glue for when you put your marzipan on top of the cake. So the first step is to fold the available marzipan that is towards you up to meet the top edge of the cake. Uh, I suggest that the best thing to do at this point is to measure out realistically how much marzipan you're going to need to cover the cake because otherwise you end up with a lot of excess which is hard to trim off. Just that quickly and bring the rest of the marzipan towards you and fold it over the top of the cake. Uh, if you take too long you might cause it to crack. Uh, because this is homemade it does crack a lot more. Uh, I quite like the way that it looks but if you're not looking for that, if you want something a bit more polished then um, just use shop board. I suggest rolling the cake towards you because you want the seam where the two pieces of marzipan meet to be at the bottom and then the other side will be your presentation side. The tool I'm using here is called a icing smoother. Strictly you're meant to have two. I've never made the investment and I just use my hand for one side and the icing smoother for the other. Uh, this helps just attach the marzipan to the cake. I think you understand this more when you're making it but it feels quite difficult to try and get the marzipan to adhere to the sponge. 
So once you've managed to cover it and get it um, attached nicely, the next step is to peel off the excess marzipan on the edges. This isn't the finished effect, I just find when it comes to cutting it's nicer to have as little excess marzipan on the ends as possible. You'll see I'm constantly going in with the icing smoother just to try and get as smooth an effect as possible because as you can see there are some cracks on the corners I'm just trying to soften how harsh that looks. I think this is probably what you're all here for, so here it is in stunning slow motion. So I decided to play on the fact that there were quite a lot of cracks along the edges of the Battenberg and I created a little vine design or tree design uh, on the top of the uh, cake. The way I did this was using just a small turning knife. I just used it because it has a very fine point at the end. Um, I realized though that it was a very faint effect so the next thing that I did was use some um, cornstarch or icing sugar, either one works and cornstarch doesn't really taste of anything. And I just um, poured quite a bit over the top of the design and then brushed the excess off to reveal a very fine white line which I thought could, looked quite pretty. So there you have it, there's my final Battenberg design, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe and like the video if you feel so inclined, I'll see you next time.